Welcome to the Belmont Journal, your source for hyperlocal news and community updates. I'm Mike Crowley, your host this week. The 2020 presidential primary election will be held on March 3rd. For the first time, we'll have five-day early voting for this primary. If you have not yet registered to vote but are at least 18 years old and a citizen of the United States, or if you are a registered voter who would like to change your party or your address, please register by February 12th at 8 p.m. You can register to vote at the town clerk's office in town hall. You can also find information online and register to vote at registertovotema.com. Questions can be directed to the town clerk's office at townclerk at belmont-ma.gov or you can call the town clerk's office at 617-993-2600. Do you know that a paper bag has a larger carbon footprint than a plastic bag? It's not a reason to, st to start using plastic bags again, again, which are banned in Belmont, but it is a reason to question whether we should be thinking about limits on paper bags. Raul Ramakrishnan um, is a senior at MIT, and he's got an idea for implementing a paper bag fee here in Belmont. Raul, thanks for coming. Thank you, Mike. Um, can you explain to us sort of the genesis for your idea? Yeah, so as you know, nearby in Cambridge, where I go to school at MIT, there mm -hmm. is a paper bag fee in place. Uh, it's a 10 cent fee on all right. paper bags given at stores. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised that Belmont did not have similar legislation as over in Cambridge, that fee has led to an 80% uh, reduction in consumption of paper bags in the city since its implementation, which I thought was absolutely incredible. That's incredible, and yeah. I, I guess I, I would have thought that people would just pay for the bag. Yeah, um, but I guess there are enough reusable bags uh -huh. available that people are actually able to get into that habit, which mm -hmm. is very environmentally friendly. So it's a, f it's a fee, it's not a tax, It right? is not a tax. The fee goes back to the merchant. So if I go to a store, they have a fee in place, that extra 10 cents goes back to the store and they can do whatever they want. Yes, exactly. As you're talking with people in the community, mm -hmm. including small businesses, mm -hmm. you know, what's the reaction? So generally the reaction has been positive. A lot of businesses have been open to this fee. Um, from the store owner's perspective, they have expressed that this fee would allow them to generate more revenue based uh -huh. on already existing supplies, mm -hmm. which makes sense. And from a customer perspective, many have expressed that if they're able to have a reusable bag and use that wherever they go, well, that's going to be 10 cents saved, essentially, wherever they go. So in the end, the cash flow is positive for them as well. As, as you're thinking about this, what, what are your next steps? What, how, how are you approaching um, you know, helping Belmont think about implementing such a fee? Right. So the main reason that I believe you know, you, having a fee on paper bags and reducing consumption is so important is because from an emissions and energy perspective, a single paper bag costs three times as much energy to create than a single-use plastic bag. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, the reason that plastic bags seem to get a lot of attention is because they're the most visible form of litter. Mm -hmm. And you know you can see pictures on the internet of them clogging up roadways, waterways, and the environment. Um, and while it is true that they litter, they are much more... Um, they cost way less energy than a paper bag to mm -hmm. make. So by using more paper bags, you're actually putting out more carbon into the atmosphere and you're you have using more energy. So you want to try to get away from that and just reuse more. But a lot of people don't know that paper bags actually cost more energy. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to make more people aware of that fact and make people more aware of exactly how how these things work and what's best for the environment from multiple perspectives. And to that extent, I'm trying to talk to as many people as possible in the town, including local policymakers, business owners, mm -hmm. and just general members of the town's community. So, so would your goal be to get a bylaw in front of town meeting uh, come this spring, yeah. Uh, potentially? Yeah, that is the goal. The goal is to get, um, to get this bag fee idea on the warrant for mm. town meeting. Mm -hmm. and. You know, assuming that it can successfully be passed at town meeting, from there it'll be taken to the state legislature. Because um, as you may know, cities are allowed to pass such fees 
um, immediately without any um, further, I guess, confirmation from the state level, okay. towns cannot do the same thing. They need some level of confirmation or permission at the state level. That, that's interesting. I think a lot of people didn't, wouldn't know yeah, that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, I've been talking to a lot of local policymakers mm -hmm. and legal counsel to, you know, really confirm that this is feasible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all signs have pointed to yes. But in all cases, the first step is to have this passed at the town meeting. Well, it sounds like a positive thing. And, um, you know, I wish you all the best. Thank you. And, thank you, Mike. Appreciate and, it. And, um, and hopefully we'll, we'll see this come to pass. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Rahul. Thank you. Welcome to This Week in the Belmontonian. And welcome back, Franklin Tucker, editor of the Belmontonian. How are you, Franklin? Just fine, thank you. So we have a new traffic calming policy in town. Mm -hmm. The traffic advisory committee uh, went before the select board and uh, to present uh, this new uh, policy in which neighbors can now uh, go online uh -huh. or go to the town hall and um, ask the town to, uh, to basically make their streets safer. Now, in the past, as we saw with the tragedy over at Lexington uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and Sycamore, uh, the town really didn't have any kind of policy in terms of uh, if there's an accident, should we, you know, do we go forward with it? Do we do we use uh, federal uh, uh, traffic uh, rules mm -hmm. to, to, to change it? Now, we do have a, a matrix, basically, uh, that the Traffic uh, Advisory Committee has approved that will um, allow you to go and, and say, I, we think our traffic is, is is really bad, and you'll have and you'll have to point out what happened, and you'll be okay. graded basically on what you can do in in that town, like put up signs or put up a raised uh, intersection, things okay. like that. Okay, so 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 we we have a policy for for sort of parsing through these requests. For, That's right. But no new money. No, no. <laughs> so you're gonna have to wait 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 a little bit for that. Right. We'll have to wait for Patrice Garvin to get it. Okay, so um, we're losing some bikes. In yes, town. we're losing bikes. The 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 lime bike uh, experiment is uh, no more. Uh, the bikes that came in, uh, I think, three years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, with a, a little bit of fanfare, and we're f ending up in your in your <laughs> on your sidewalk that you had to push away. <laughs> um, uh, it turns out that the uh, company in a, in a in a company wide. Um, um, a decision has go has decided to go to what is much more popular for them throughout the world. I mean, they're, right. they're a worldwide brand, basically. That that they're going to go to scooters, and it just makes a lot of sense. Scooters are so much more popular than bikes. But, um, but they're not bringing they're not bringing scooters to to Belmont. Not yet. You know, they're going to have to go through a process. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, um, they they and Lime likes to be in the city is number one. Mm -hmm. If you go to Washington or Paris. You'll see a lime bike and uh, a lime scooter, I should say. So um, it's up in the air. We'll see what happens. Maybe we will have scooters, and they're a lot of fun. So. Okay. <laughs> maybe that's. Maybe we won't have it in Belmont because it is fun. The new school building. Um, people driving by the site might see some additional progress. Yes, you'll see a new landmark. It's a huge crane, and the crane is there for one thing, and that is to put steel up. We are seeing the first steel coming up, uh, the first uh, section of the uh, building, uh, section A, mm -hmm. uh, has been, all the, all the groundwork has been done, and now steel is coming up, and that is great. And, and a lot of that has to do with uh, um, being on time and, 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 and meeting all the uh, challenges of uh, winter and things like that. It's also, and it also is um, 18 months to, uh, f from when the steel goes up to when the building will well, the first part of the building will come up. That, that's amazing, and 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 I think we're getting bids soon. That's right, 100, almost 100% 100 of the bids will be coming in, so we'll know exactly how much we're off, or, or basically if the value the value technology um, uh, process uh, showed that uh, we are actually uh, in line with the um, the budget. So it's a, it's a rather exciting time at the, at the high school. All right, so thank you so much, Franklin, and and we'll talk to you next time. Thank you. Belmont Light is in the process of converting every street light in town to new highly efficient LED street lights with hopes to complete the rollout by the end of next year. Here is Belmont Light electrical engineer Yatin Thakral to tell us more. Yeah, Yatin Thakral, engineer at Belmont Light. 
Uh, the purpose of this project is to replace all the existing uh, high pressure sodium lights with LED street lights in the town of Belmont. Uh, to date, we have replaced approximately 200 uh, existing lights with LED street lights. Some of the streets that we've converted so far, Oxford Ave, Fairview Ave, Park Road, Livermore Road, Dalton Road, and Woods Road are a few. We have approximately 2,400 lights that need to be replaced. Belmont Light anticipates to be completed with the project in 2021. So one of the benefits is these uh, LED lights are equipped with a smart photo eye. So Belmont Light will be able to control these lights remotely. Another benefit is uh, the lifespan of the LED street lights is about 20 to 25 years versus uh, five years for the high pressure sodium lights that we have out in the field right now. So this will significantly reduce, if not eliminate, any maintenance costs associated with these lights. And uh, also the smart photo eye will uh, inform Belmont Light anytime if a light was to go out <clears throat> due to damage or uh, just, just lifespan. Uh, so that will uh, eliminate the customer call-in process. The new LED street lights use significantly less power than the high pressure sodium lights, so the town will benefit with a uh, lower electric bill. Welcome to this week in the Citizen Herald and welcome back Joanna Juvelis, senior multimedia journalist with the Citizen Herald and Wicked Local Online. Hi Joanna, how are you? Great. So let's talk about the Bradford. Yes, I'll give you an update on the Bradford. Okay. This project, uh, they started construction exactly three years ago. So it's a little behind schedule, but hoping to uh, have at least two of the buildings ready for people to occupy, um, I would say by the summer. Okay, so this year. Yes, but what people may not know is that there has been some serious cleanup going on on this project site. Uh -huh. Since day one, Sage Environmental was hired and has been doing everything they can to, to clean up the toxic waste that was on the site. There was a dry cleaners which caused this toxic waste. Okay. And now, to be honest with you, um, the groundwater is probably healthier than our drinking water. That's mm -hmm. how well the cleanup has gone. However, they are now starting to do, um, they're, they're periodically doing testing of air on the site as well as off the site. They're testing soil gas and they're still testing the groundwater. And what they okay. did recently is in the Winslow building, which is where Starbucks is, mm -hmm. and it's the only weather type building right now, they did some air quality testing. And what they found was there were levels of TCE and PCE. Those are the chemicals that come from dry cleaning. the dry cleaning. Yes, and um, they found that the levels do not meet the threshold standards of the mass DEP. They need to get these levels down and they need to fit so what they're doing now is they're trying to figure out what's causing these levels to be so okay. uh, high and they're not unhealthy like to, to so, live in so, the environment so not a cause but, for worry for people going to starbucks or exactly but but it, it's just you know for mass dep standards and sage environmental standards they want to get them down and they, what they're doing is they think it, it could be caused by the building materials they think huh. it could be caused by something in the in the glue that was used or something in the paint so they're trying to determine the cause especially before they continue finishing other parts of the buildings. Sure. And once they determine that, hopefully those levels will go down. In the meantime, they're, they're doing a lot. To, uh, they're working with a mechanical engineer for better ventilation okay. um, in these areas where there's, where there's higher levels. So continuing work going on, mm -hmm. nothing to worry about. Yeah. And, um, well, yeah, I think it's just worth noting that uh, as of December 31st, they've pumped and treated 42 million gallons of water on the That's site. That's amazing. It is amazing. And this pumping and treating will be continuing forever, they said, as long as it's, you know, going to be the Bradford, it's going to continue forever. And they, ha they actually have a treatment room located under the ground, okay. kind of near Starbucks underground. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> All right, so... Um, Fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what else then, Joanna? Oh, I think what else is newsworthy is that uh, Theo's Pizza was recently broken into, and the way the burglars got in was through their skylight. We, we've had a spate of break-ins, it seems. It seems, and, and almost seems like they might be inside jobs, because this one, they stole $6,000 from an office draw. And why would anyone keep that much money in an office drawer? I well, don't know. So, so I would but, imagine that practice is changing. And $500 in the cash register. Mm -hmm. Um, so hopefully, 
you know, hopefully maybe there's surveillance and they can try to find out who did that. Okay. And mailbox phishing is becoming a, it's a statewide problem where people have figured out how to fish into these older mailboxes and they'll take people's bills and they'll take the checks and they'll alter who they're made payable to and they'll alter who, uh, the amounts, and this actually happened to the owner of Shell Gas Station on Pleasant Street recently. Who mailed a bill in a yep. mailbox right yep. across from his um, right. property. Right. So according to Jamie McIsaac, our chief, he said they're looking into the post office is going to update, you know, it's going to take time, but they're planning to update the mailboxes. Right. Okay, well, thanks so much, Joanna, and we will talk next You're time. welcome. This weekend, Sunday, January 19th, the Belmont Chinese American Association is celebrating the Chinese New Year. More than 100 Belmont residents will be performing at the gala and 80 volunteers have worked to make the gala happen. We met with some of them while they were rehearsing at the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, first, I want to say Happy New Year to everyone. And I hope you know you has a great rest year. Chinese New Year is a very important festival for us. We uh, has been here for several years, but we still kind of like follow whatever the South, uh, the Chinese culture is. And this is kind of the big events. Uh, we want to all, uh, get all the people feel they still like home and get their children knows we have like a long uh, history of how to celebrate New Year. We start prepare this gala about like maybe three months ago. We uh, select about like 14 kind of shows as including dance, song, acrobat and um, others. Each year we perform different traditional Chinese dance. We, we love Belmont, we love, love this area, so it's like if we make friends, we bond between us because we dance together, like it's, it's really a joyful thing to do it together, it's more than just like you dance in a solo, so I think this is very important for me. I'm an informatician, I work at Boston Children's Hospital, um, I'm also a Belmont, Belmont resident. I live in Belmont for about uh, seven plus years. So in my spare time, I like singing. I, like, I also like to play, play the guitar. I'm just an amateur songwriter. I write this song I dedicate to my, my love, beloved town, Belmont. It's majorly about my life in Belmont, this town. I, I talk about uh, uh, my kids uh, participating in the Spelling Bee program. Uh, uh, I talk about they are playing on the uh, uh, football fields. Uh, I talk about all the, uh, the buses at Waverly Square. There's a lot of good memories that uh, Belmont, this small town, brings to me. So this is a tribute back to this town I love. Belmont is a very open town. We know we are like an immigrant from other country, but we, we share all this culture with uh, like, you know, the, the whole like, Belmont community. They, they can learn, they can know us and also we want to show them, you know, uh, what's kind of this like exchange. And uh, I think, you know, a lot of people are also really curious about like, you know, what's the difference? You know, we are the Chinese, the biggest, you know, uh, like a third of the biggest country in the world. Then this is another chance to let them to know about that. The Belmont High School wrestling team of 22 members is coached by Andy McCauley, a 1984 graduate of Belmont High. He was a four-year wrestler at Belmont High and captain of the team his senior year. He's also a 20-year science teacher at Chennery Middle School. Chet Messer spoke with him about high school wrestling and the 2019-2020 team this past week. I like to compare wrestling to, uh, and coaching wrestling to having a hockey coach and have his players arrive unaware of how to skate. I was a small guy, right? And wrestling is the greatest sport because no matter your size, you can wrestle. It, the, range, the weight classes range from 106 pounds all the way up to 285 pounds. So being a small guy my freshman year, I had played hockey prior to that and realized when my line mate outweighed me by 60 pounds that my future did not lie on the rink. It, it was on the mats. This year, our 2019-2020 season, we currently have 22 active participants. 
Um, and that I'm a, proud of the fact that we have 22 participants this year because we've, when I first started out, we had eight. So we've grown significantly in the past four years. You are not automatically a varsity wrestler from week to week. It's anyone can challenge you and you have to defeat that opponent within your team every single week. Yes. So a wrestling match at the high school level, there are three periods, each last two minutes. So it can last as long as six minutes. If there's overtime, it can go one extra period for each of those. So it could go as long as nine minutes. But a wrestling match can it ends immediately when you pin your opponent to the mat. There are many ways to score points. You start out on your feet. If you take your opponent to the mat and gain control, you score two points for a takedown. If you escape from that position and stand back up to neutral, to your feet, you score one point. When you are on the mat and you have top control over your opponent, if you break him flat and can turn him and take his shoulders toward the mat for three seconds, you score two points. If you keep them there for five seconds, you score three points. If you reverse positions from the bottom, you score two points because now you're the top or dominant position. Get our first win against Lexington. Thank you for asking. That was a super exciting match. Um, it came down to our last match and my wrestler scored points in the last three seconds of that last match and we won the duel because of that. So. I was very happy this year. We've had a lot of challenges with the new building. We're wrestling, as you can see, in the cafeteria um, for home matches. We're at the middle school, um, sh sh <laughs> taking all the equipment from one building to the next and all this other things. But we do what we need to do to grow a sport. And now it's time for Chet Messer's scoreboard. This past Wednesday night, the Arlington Spy Ponders and the Belmont Girls Marauders played to a 0-0 tie. This moved the Belmont's team record to seven wins, three ties, and one loss, and they remain in fourth place in the Middlesex Liberty Division, a very competitive division. Of the Globe's top 20 teams, four of them come from the Middlesex Liberty Division. The Marauda boys lost to the Arlington Spy Ponders 2 to nothing in a game on Wednesday night. Belmont remains in fourth place in the Middlesex Liberty Division. The Belmont girls are in second place in the Middlesex Liberty Division with a record of 5 and 2. Overall, they have 6 wins and 3 losses. Their next game is against the undefeated Woburn Tanners girls team. The boys' team is undefeated in the Middlesex League and is holding on to first place. They are ranked number 16 in the top 20 poll of the Boston Globe and were involved in a very competitive game with Melrose this past Tuesday. With Belmont leading by four at the start of the fourth period, Ali Naruzzi made a nice pass into Mac Annis, who floated in a two-pointer. After a Melrose foul shot, Marozzi and Minakazi connected on a give-and-go play. Minakazi made one of two. The ever-present, Ali Naruzzi then stole an inbound pass and scored for a 59-51 lead. On the next play, Naruzzi was the thief once again, passed to Jackson Stevens, who laid it in for two points, and Belmont had a 10-point lead. Melrose then worked the ball up the court, and guess what? Suddenly, there was Mr. Naruzzi again, intercepting another pass. He gave the ball up to Jackson Stevens, who found Mac Annis under the hoop, passed it to him, and Belmont then had a 12-point lead. Belmont outscored Melrose 27-18 in the fourth period to win by 13. And now it's time for your community calendar. Join Belmont Community for the celebration of the 26th annual Martin Luther King Community Breakfast on Monday, January 20th at 8.45 a.m. The guest speaker is Regini Shaw, founder of Suffolk Immigration Clinic on uplifting human personality, Martin Luther King and immigrants' rights today. All proceeds go to support the METCO program. Tickets are at the door or at eventbrite.com. 
Parents' Choice Awards winner, singer, and musician Emily Hall will be at the Public Library on Tuesday, January 21st at 10.30 a.m. Come to listen to her songs Old and New and participate in lots of interactive fun with your kids. And this is recommended for families with children ages 0 to 5. Mystic the Therapy Dog is visiting the Beach Street Center. Come to pet him on Tuesday, January 21st at 11 a.m. and Tuesday, January 28th at 1.15 p.m. He's a three-year-old golden retriever certified therapy dog and he's looking for more volunteer opportunities with seniors. Belly rubs are appreciated. The Public Library hosts author Len Abram on Tuesday, January 21st at 7 p.m. A Ph.D. in literature, Len Abram will speak on his novel Empty Doorways. He taught at three universities, including the University of Maryland Armed Forces program. Empty Doorways is his third novel. Online registration for grades K through 12 opens on January 24th for the school year 2020 to 2021. This registration is for all incoming kindergartners and families new to Belmont Public Schools. Kindergarten Parent Na Information Night is scheduled for Thursday, January 23rd, 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the Chenery Middle School Auditorium. The Foundation for Belmont Education Annual Fundraiser is only a few months away. It's a time to save the date and help the FBE get ready for its largest fundraising event of the year. Learn more about volunteer opportunities, the auction wish list, and how the FBE supports the Belmont Public Schools at fbe-belmont.org. That's it for this week. If you want to see your events featured on the community calendar, please email your info to fred at belmontmedia.org. We finish our show with a programming update for your Belmont Media Center channels. Be sure to watch. Well, that's all for this week. I'm Mike Crowley. This is the Belmont Journal, and we'll see you next time.